Thank you everyone for being here. Um, it's a pleasure to be part of this discussion. So the first thing I thought when they told me, bring something about your life, bring something about your journey or about your practice. The first thing I thought, where I have lived, where I have spent my life as an, any kind of normal citizenship, where I've been and how that has influenced my life. So from being from a place who actually the biggest landmark is the cathedral, where everyone knows each other, and those kind of very small urban settlements. I've been living like there for half of my life, and the rest of my life in being in cities like Bogota and Melbourne, with different scales, different problems, and different ideas about what is an active city, what is good and what is bad, what is important to address in a city that it has a small settlement, what do they feel is good design and no? So that's how, where, where I live and how that's been influencing my life. Something really amazing where I started studying architecture it was in 1999. Um, it was very impressive how Bogota was. I went to Bogota to study architecture and then the city was not, there was not much attention in the public space, but apparently something really amazing happened if we, there were two politicians that were unusual politicians that were giving a lot of attention to the cities, to the design and the public space. There was a mathematician, an academic, and an economist who actually gave a lot of power to design and that how the city transformed. There was a lot of attention in public infrastructure, a lot of attention in community infrastructure, and that became very important for the economic growth. So it was very influential for my life as an young student as a young architect to then uh, realize that Colombia has something that not many countries have and I think that's very valuable. Every public building has to be designed by a competition that is anonymous. So every single young architect or designer has the possibility to vote in somehow. So with Marco, who is here today, we did this competition in 2008 after working for different office. And we actually were so lucky to, want to win that competition. So what we found important in these kind of things is these were for vulnerable communities, so people who have been displaced by different reasons. So there was neighborhoods that actually were very informal neighborhoods. There was not much infrastructure. So these schools were the hearts. How to connect a heart where there's nothing there. So that city, for example, has um, the most important part of the city or the cultural elements is the accordion. So we thought, okay, let's every single kid from the single kid from the very senior people are very connected to that instrument. So we took that instrument as an excuse to design something that connects to people. This year we went to visit the site and we went to see all these kids and interview them without telling them that we were designers. So we were actually wanted to know what they think about the design and what they believe. And they actually explained the concept better than us. So it was really rewarding. Then we did another competition and we were, again, very lucky. We, did, we, we got this competition. They really low budget projects, like three million for 6,000 square meters. So I, I know every people who has built something know how hard it is to build something like that. And again, we went to see what is important for this site, for these neighborhoods that, so most of the settlements were very informal. So how people, it, it was like people when they got money, the one room, then when they get a little bit more money, they, they do the second, the second floor and so on. So, and the mountains and the connection with the mountains. So we decided to kind of study the profile that the city has and then bring this to the design and the colors of the city and combine that's something that we've been exploring, how to bring landscape and combine landscape with architecture. We don't believe in the way we practice that architecture is one thing, landscape is one other thing, urban design is something else, it's, everything is merged. So we actually kind of infiltrate in the other people's um, fields and we actually want people to infiltrate our, our kind of thinking and the way we design. Then we've been, came, I came to Australia, I did exactly what Eduardo was telling you, I did my master's again. And it was very interesting because
because I found people like Michael Trajan that actually was very inspired during my time at Melbourne Uni. And again, I was exploring the idea of how to combine landscape with architecture. This was in Sunshine, a project made by, for the community. It was called the Sustainable Sunshine Park. So it was how to connect a, a garden and an existing food court with the, with the people and how to bring what kind of community infrastructure, which was something that really drives my attention. How to bring landscape with architecture together and don't feel like this is one thing, this is another thing. We are actually always working those two levels. Finally, and as I was explaining before, we decided to do at least, with Marco, at least one competition a year. It's really demanding to do competitions, but we promised that since 2008. Uh, we've been, this year we did two, and it's been like we've we sometimes collaborate with people, as Eduardo said, he already showed the other, I knew he would show it, so I didn't think it, <laughs> to not repeat the same information. So it's, it's like how to collaborate with others and continue voting somehow with the type of design you have. So this was our entry for Flinders Street. We also participated in the Flinders Street uh, competition. We didn't get shortlisted. And then we co cooperate with the firm who got shortlisted. So it's been very interesting, a process that, again, we were exploring that idea about how to combine landscape with architecture, what is urban design, how to combine with public infrastructure, and also ask other people questions about what do you think Flinders should have? And that's how the, all the designs come uh, in, our, in our practice. So we are very interested to continue doing this. I'm starting a PhD in contributive architecture. That's what I want to do, contribute, and my passion is um, education and design for community infrastructure. Thank you.